All right, so as I mentioned in the announcements, you guys already know I'm going to be preaching about this morning. We're we'll preaching about our Bible memory challenge, and I'm going to be going over some of the importance of just memorizing Scripture, memorizing the Bible, uh, the things that you can learn from that, why it's valuable, and how it's taught in Scripture that we should be memorizing the Bible. Now, you might not realize that the Bible talks a lot about memorizing the Bible because it, not, it doesn't always necessarily say, memorize the Bible, right? That would be too easy, right? It's, it's a little bit, you got to look at the language and understand what it's talking about. We start off in Deuteronomy chapter 6, and this is actually the passage that we're going to be memorizing as a church as part of the challenge. So the challenge, of course, is to be able to memorize this passage within one month and memorize it to the point to where you're able to quote it back out loud to somebody else without making any errors, without making mistakes. We believe every word of God is pure, and we want to make sure that we're doing due diligence to not just, well, I kind of get it. No, when you memorize the scripture, memorize it verbatim, word for word. Get the whole passage memorized and be able to quote it out loud. And it's harder to quote out loud when you're practicing. Everyone who's done the Bible memory understands this. When you're practicing with yourself, you're repeating it in your head, you're looking at flashcards, you're doing whatever, and you're memorizing it, it's one thing to get it down to where you think you got it. It's a whole other thing to be able to say it out loud to somebody else. I don't know what it is about it. For whatever reason, it just kind of adds a little bit extra pressure. And then it's, it's even harder to get up behind a pulpit in front of a whole group of people and be able to quote all those passages. But uh, you, thankfully, you don't have to do that. I'm not going to make everybody get up and quote Deuteronomy chapter 6 to prove to everybody that you did it. But I am asking you to quote out loud to at least one person. So why Deuteronomy chapter 6? Well, in Deuteronomy chapter 6, we see here the first and the great commandment. And we're going to look at, start reading in verse number four. This is actually quoted in the New Testament when Jesus Christ is asked, hey, what's the, you know, what's the great commandment? He says, you know, the first and great commandment is, and then he quotes Deuteronomy 6, verse number four. He starts in verse number four. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And then he goes, in, in the New Testament, he goes, and the second is like unto it, that you should love your neighbor as yourself. And it's, you know, uh, basically on those two commandments hangs all the law and the prophets. That's like, encapsulates all of God's commandments. Hey, love God and love your neighbor as yourself. Essentially, the, the law is just packed into those two really basic concepts. And... Um, I think this is a great passage to have memorized. So if you keep reading there, look at verse number six. It says, In these words, which I command thee this day, shall be in thine heart. So what I was talking about, the Bible doesn't say, you must memorize the Bible in terms like that. Well, when the Bible says that these words shall be in your heart, in your heart means it's inside of you. You know them. You you. You have a knowledge, an intimate knowledge of these words and they're abiding in you. And in order to have God's word literally like in you, um, you need to be reading, studying and memorizing in order to retain God's words within you to call them back, um, back up. And because it says here, uh, these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. And shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates. It sounds like this is pretty important. <laughs> it sounds like this is extremely important. This is, this is great. Now, this isn't just advice. Okay, this, is, this goes beyond advice on how to live your best life now. This is, you need to understand the vitality of God's word, the vitality of the commandments. You need to understand how important this is. It's so important that I want you to have these words, which I command you this day in the book of Deuteronomy, I want you to have these words in your heart. You need to be teaching your kids about this. Look, this is important. And it's not even just important just to say, teach your kids. He says, teach them diligently. And not just when it's school time, teach them diligently when you're sitting in the house. When you're walking by the way, you're going on a trip. Oh, family's going out. Hey, we're going to go get some ice cream. Guess what you're doing? You're talking about this. 
When you lie down, okay, it's time to go to bed. Oh, by the way, kids, we're still talking about the Bible. And when you rise up, you get up in the morning. Hey, we're starting the day off. Guess what? This is what God's Word says. God's Word is that important. If it's that important that you should be talking about it essentially all the time. Doesn't it just make sense that it should be in your heart and that you'd have God's Word memorized? It should be your meditation all the day, which we're going to look at a lot of other passages that talk about that. When you're meditating on God's Word, you have it with you. It, it's something that is on your mind regularly. And when you're memorizing Scripture, you're literally meditating on God's Word. You're absorbing it, you're thinking about it, and you're committing it into your heart and into your mind. Extremely important. And he goes on here, besides talking about all time, it says, verse 8, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand. He's like, basically, have it with you at all times. You'd, it should be right on your hand, frontlets between thine eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates. Amen. You should be just engulfed in the word of God. It is your life. The Bible says, turn, if you would, to Jeremiah chapter 15. I'm going to read for you from the New Testament, Colossians chapter 3, verse number 16. If you want to write this reference now, you can look it up later. Colossians 3, 16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. So we want the word of Christ to dwell within us richly with all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Of course, I preached on Colossians 3 last week on, uh, in my sermon about the Psalms, Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. But one way to memorize God's word is to put it to music, put it to song. I mean, you think about all of the songs that you have memorized. I've got, ton, unfortunately, tons of worldly songs that are just memorized in my mind that they're not going away. But the reason why is because it's set to the tune, it's set to that music, and it's easy for your mind to recall those things and to set them to memory. So, um, when the Bible says here in Galatians 3, 16, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly with all wisdom. And then he brings up the Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. It's not a coincidence, you know, uh, allowing, you know, memorizing those Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs is a lot easier because they're put to music. And that's one way you're going to let the words of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Jeremiah chapter 15 is where we're going to start looking at right now. And we're going to see... Jeremiah basically pleading with God to kind of extend mercy because obviously the book of Jeremiah is a very negative book. Jeremiah is preaching the, the destruction of Israel and the captivity because they've just strayed from the Lord. And um, he's kind of preaching doom and gloom to Israel, trying to get them to wake up. Hey, serve the Lord, you know, turn back to God. And, and they're continually just being stiff-necked. So, in Jeremiah 15, we're going to start reading in verse number 15. This is Jeremiah speaking to the Lord. He says, O Lord, thou knowest, remember me and visit me and revenge me of my persecutors. Take me not away in thy long suffering. Know that for thy sake I have suffered rebuke. So he's bringing up to God the things that he's done. Hey, you know that I've been rebuked for your sake, God. I've been out there. I've been preaching your word. Remember me. Remember me in your long suffering because he's bringing up the fact that God is long suffering. Say, hey, Please consider me when you're bringing your judgment down, you know, and allow your long suffering to pass upon me because I put myself out there. I've been suffering rebuke for your sake. Verse number 16, though, is what I want to focus on. He says, thy words were found and I did eat them. He's saying, I've consumed your words. That, that has gone, I mean, that's why he says the word eat. I mean, obviously he didn't physically eat. Um, we see other passages though, where someone's getting, you know, Here's a scroll, eat this, right? It, it's symbolizing, it's showing you just, just completely consuming the word of God and having that be in you, having it be part of you. And a great way to do that. Again, I believe this is, these are all references to just, I mean, memorizing scripture. I think it was, it was in the book of Jeremiah where Jeremiah wrote the letter and they bring that before the kings and then they toss it in the fire. And what happens? They get the exact same word again even though that was the only original copy, right? The original autograph was destroyed and burned, yet God's word was still preserved. Amen. And, uh, of course, that, that's a whole other subject for another day. I don't want to get into all of that. Preservation of God's word. Amen. That's what we believe here um, 
even if the original autographs are destroyed, God is capable of, of retaining his words for us just as much as he's able to give it the first time. So, um, anyhow, I don't want I don't want to get down to that rabbit trail this morning. Thy words were found, and I did eat them, and thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart, for I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. You know, the word of God ought to be something that's joyful unto you also. I mean, when you have the, the understanding that this is life unto us, God's word is living. It's not just some dead word. It's not just some old, these ancient books written by this, these goat herders, right? The atheists want to just mock the word of God. These men didn't even have plumbing. They didn't even understand anything. You know, no. This is the word of God. This is our creator, the, the God of the universe, the God that's created everything, has spoken to us, has given us knowledge and wisdom. And we need to treat those words as such and not just treat it as some drudgery, some chore. Oh, man, you mean I got to read the Bible again? Oh, I got to read through this? But Oh, we're reading the Old Testament. Why are we going to Deuteronomy and Jeremiah? I just want to read the Psalms and the New Testament. Look, all of God's words are pure. The, 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 the law is, like, is a light to us to lighten our path. And when you understand just the, the amount of wisdom and how much your life is benefited by being able to get the word of the Lord, understand the word of the Lord, and apply the word of the Lord in your life, it is, I mean, this is going to make or break your life. Whether or not you can get these truths and this understanding. And when you, when you can treat this as such, that's why all throughout Scripture, you read the Proverbs, you read everything. Look, this is way more valuable than rubies and silver and gold and all those riches that you could, you could waste on the, the lusts of your flesh and live in some real comfortable life that's going to end up making you miserable and destroying you anyways. Because riches are just vain and deceitful. If you understand the value of these words in this book, man, it should be a joyful thing. And you know what? You may not realize this now, and the younger you are, it may be harder for you to understand what I'm even talking about. But the older you get, and the more experience you get, and, and, and the more mistakes you've made in your life, you can look back and be like, man, I wish I would have just read more and understood more and got it in my heart more to help me to not make those foolish mistakes because the Bible has all the answers and it told you how to do it right the first time. Amen. And I'm going to be preaching a sermon tonight directed mostly at children. So hopefully any children here today, if your families, you know, talk your parents into coming back tonight because I've got a really important message for you this evening. Um, and, and this is important, and it's hard to, to relate that sometimes. But you have to take it on faith that God, this is God's word. And our creator gave us instructions, and he wants us. He wants us to do right. He wants us to have fulfilling lives. He wants us to experience the joy of the fruits of the spirit. But it's up to you to choose whether or not you're going to do it. How important is it to you? All, everything you need is right here, but how important is it really to you? Is it as important as that TV program you want to go home and turn on and watch on your DVR and spend you know, hours binge watching? Is it, is it as important as that? Yeah, that's a lot of fun. You get some entertainment out of that, but here today, gone tomorrow. Put some importance on the eternal yeah. word of God. These words are timeless. The message is timeless. It doesn't matter what culture we live in. God's word rings true over and over and over and over and over again. This should be our guide. Get them in your heart. Put a priority, put an emphasis on that. See, you know what? It's not just enough to read. A lot of Christians think, well, I've read the Bible. Well, now, a lot of Christians haven't even read the Bible cover to cover one time. And if that's you... And you've been saved for a while, you, you didn't just get saved a few days ago or last week or last year. Look, if that's you, then shame on you. Get in God's word. Don't just be spoon fed every little thing from whatever church you're going to. Pick up the book, read it for yourself, consume it and let it dwell in your heart richly. 
And if you have read the Bible once, cover to cover, great. Don't stop there. This is something we need regularly. It's easy to forget things. We need to hear from God continually. And the more you have God's word in your heart, the more it's going to help direct your path, which is going to make you, help you make the right choices. Flip over to Jeremiah chapter 20, just a, a few pages forward in your Bible. I'll submit to this, uh, this to you this morning. Having God's word in your heart will give you boldness. And the more you have God's word in your heart and you have it memorized, it's going on in your mind. You'll have a burning to do right even when faced with opposition. Unfortunately, these days, a lot of Christians, a lot of believers are timid and cowards and back down because wicked people have loud voices and try to intimidate and make you afraid to stand on the word of God. But if your thoughts, if your mind, if you're dwelling on God's word just day after day after day, you're reading from it, you're meditating on it, and that's what's in your heart, it's going to be a lot harder for you to be silenced than when you already just have the Word of God sitting on a book and you've got a bunch of people speaking out against it. Where's your boldness going to be? Look at Jeremiah chapter 20, verse number 7. Because if you want to talk about someone who faced opposition, it's Jeremiah. Nobody was lining up with Jeremiah. As with many of God's prophets throughout history. But this is an example we're looking at. Look at verse number 7, Jeremiah chapter 20. The Bible says, O Lord, thou hast deceived me, and I was deceived. Thou art stronger than I, and hast prevailed. I am in derision daily. Everyone mocketh me. He said, Jeremiah is speaking the word of God, and everyone just mocks him. There's some big joke. Oh, yeah, he's speaking of the Lord. Yeah, right. Verse number 8. For since I spake, I cried out. I cried violence and spoil because the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me and a derision daily. Look at what he says here in verse number 9. Then I said, I will not make mention of him nor speak any more in his name. Say, so you know what? I just, you know, everyone's just going to mock me anyways. I'm trying to warn them about what's happening, what's going to happen, and no one wants to receive it, so I just won't talk about it anymore. Who says, I'm just, I just won't, I won't say anything. Fine. But look what it says here at the, at the second part of verse number nine. But his word was in mine heart. You can't get away from it. When it's in your heart, when you've meditated on it, when you memorize it, when it's just in your heart and in your mind, you just can't get away from it. You can't just say, you say, yeah, you know what? Fine, they don't want to receive it. I'll just shut up then. But his word was in mine heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing and I could not stay. He said, I just couldn't refuse. I just could not keep silent. Amen. I was weary. It was a weary for me not to say anything. Because when you have God's word and you have that wisdom of the Lord just burning in your mind and in your heart, you have to share it. You have to give it out to people. And that's going to give you the boldness because you're going to be confident of what the Bible says when you've been reading it and memorizing it and thinking on it. Hey, you've got the word of God. You have wisdom. And you're going to need to share that with other people. And look, that's what Jeremiah was called to do. He wasn't called to just give him one chance and then just shut his mouth. No, God wanted him to be a preacher. And by investing the time and just knowing the word of God and letting it, you know, he's the one who said, hey, your words were found and I ate them. I consumed them. So as a result here from chapter 15 to chapter 20, he's saying, you know what? I, I cannot stay. It's a burning fire. I just have to preach. Verse number 10, for I heard the defaming of many fear on every side. Report say they and we will report, report it. All my familiars watch for my halting saying, peradventure, he will be enticed and we shall prevail against him and we shall take our revenge on him. This is the attitude of the people that were just round about. I mean, they're just waiting. Any opportunity, we're going to pounce on Jeremiah. We're waiting for him to stop. We're waiting to catch him in his words. We're waiting to get Jeremiah. That's the attitude of the people that were against Jeremiah. And you know what he says? Verse 11, but the Lord is with me as a mighty, terrible one. Therefore, my persecutors shall stumble and they shall not prevail. They shall be greatly ashamed for they shall not prosper. Their everlasting confusion shall never be forgotten. When God's word is residing within you, 
you'll have the boldness and the understanding. One of the reasons you have the boldness is because you know God's on your side. You've got the Word of God in your heart. You've got the Word of God in your mind. The Word of God has already been telling you, hey, fear not what they can do unto you. Fear not. I'm your shield. I'm your buckler. I'm your strength. I'm your high tower. Trust in me, but just do what I say. I'll take care of you. I know your needs. I know your needs before you even ask of them. And when you have all those words just residing in you, what more is left? How can you not speak? The disciples of Jesus Christ were facing persecution. We're facing arrest. They've been arrested. They're beaten. They're thrown into prison. He said, we cannot help but teach and preach the things which we have heard. We can't help it. They've gone in. We've consumed them. We've meditated on these things. We've done these things. We've acted on these things. Now we can't do it anymore. We've been with the Lord. We're going to keep going. Turn to um, Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30. I'm going to read for you from Psalm 119. We're going to go there in a minute also. But in regards to you know, having the boldness because you have God's word just living in you, residing in you, because you have it in you, you've memorized it. Psalm 119 verse 23 says, Princes also did sit and speak against me, but thy servant did meditate in thy statutes. Thy testimonies also are my delight and my counselors. So you're saying, hey, I've had, I've had people in high power, princes, speaking against me. But you know what I did? I meditated in your statutes, in the, in the statutes of the law of God. I was meditating on that. That's where I get my instruction from. So you know what? I don't care if the princes are going to speak against me. I don't care if the most powerful, wicked people in the world are going to speak against me when I have God's word in my heart. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse number 11, the Bible reads, For this commandment which I command thee this day, it is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that thou shouldest say, Who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it? Neither is it beyond the sea that thou shouldest say, Who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it? But the word is very nigh unto thee in thy mouth and in thy heart, that thou mayest do it. We need to, he's saying, you know what, the word of God, it's not in heaven and someone just needs to go up and bring it back down to us. It's not across the sea in another country. We have the word of God right here. It is right here. You don't have to go seeking for it. It's already here. And what he says here, the word of God is very nigh in thy mouth and in thy heart. When the word of God is in your heart, it's going to help you to do it. He says, that thou mayest do it. We need to get the word of God within us to help us to do it. We have a daily struggle against the flesh. The spirit warth against the flesh and the flesh against the spirit. So you cannot do the things that you would. Well, when you let the word of God dwell in you richly, when, when you have the word of God in your heart, that's going to help strengthen your spirit to overcome that flesh. It's going to help you to do that. Turn, if you would please, to Psalm 119. Psalm 119. I considered memorizing Psalm 119 for our Bible memory challenge, but I decided against it for the month. We may lump two months together and do it. I don't know, but I decided, let's just see how they do with, with Deuteronomy 6. Maybe next year we'll, we'll, we'll dig into Psalm 119. A great passage. Psalm 119, all about God's law. The biggest chapter psalm 119 the longest psalm the longest chapter in the entire bible glorifying the law of the lord the commandments his precepts just just exalting god's commandments amen great psalm and coincidentally enough or not coincidentally enough we're going to see a lot about meditating and memorizing god's word god's laws even Say, but we're in the New Testament. Why do we have to memorize? Look, Jesus Christ said, I'm not come to destroy the law, but to fulfill. He said, till, till, till heaven and earth pass, there should not one jot or one tittle fail from the law until all be fulfilled. And I just preached on it a few weeks ago. Has everything been fulfilled yet? No. We still need, look, we're not saved by the law. The law doesn't save our soul. The law shows us we're sinners. Jesus Christ saves our soul. 
We put our trust in him. He'll save us. But he still wants us to obey his commandments. He still wants us to not sin. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid! Romans 5 teaches us that, hey, where sin abounds, grace does much more abound. Amen! The work that Jesus did is enough to cover all sin, but does that mean we just continue sinning? Of course not. Well, then what's going to keep us... How do we know if we're sinning? God's law. That's what tells us whether or not we're sinning. It's, it's a very easy concept. It really is. It really is simple. But people who just don't have any regard for God's word, ultimately, are the ones that want to throw away God's word. Just say, oh, we don't, we don't need that Old Testament stuff. We don't need to look at that law. It's foolishness. foolishness. You're only going to bring yourself into a world of hurt. That, I mean, at the end of the day, you can be saved and have that attitude. A lot of saved people have that attitude. Doesn't mean you're not a child. But as a child, guess what? God's going to be disciplining you when you're not listening to him. When you're not doing what he's telling you to do. Look at Jonah. Jonah was a child of God. He didn't want to do what God told him to do. He got thrown overboard from a ship and, and swallowed up by a great whale and spent three days and three nights in the belly of a whale. That's not, you know, it's a cool story. And they might make cartoons about it that look really cool, but I guarantee you it was not as pleasant as the cartoon makes it out to be. He wasn't floating on some raft, you know, with a, with a candle lit in, in, this, in this whale's belly and just kind of waiting for a few days. I don't want to get... I mean, just think about what whales eat and just all the half-digested food and stuff that he had to be floating around in. Yeah, not good. And he was vomited up out on the beach. So that's what happens to God's children when you disobey him. And, you know, he had a change of heart after that. <laughs> he decided to go and do what God told him to do. Let's love God's commandments, his law. They should be our delight. They should, they, they're, they're light to lighten our path. So I do turn to uh, where, where chapter did we go through Deuteronomy chapter 30? We did, right? We're in Psalm 119. All right, look at verse number nine in Psalm 119. Verse number nine, the Bible reads, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Look at verse 10. With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. He said, I'm seeking you with my whole heart. Are you seeking God with your whole heart? Are you, are you trying to find out God and, and seeking with your whole heart? He's saying, oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Look at verse number 11. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Hiding God's word in your heart. This isn't just like hiding a Bible in your pocket. It's going one step further than that. You're hiding God's word in your heart. This is memorizing God's word. This is taking the word of God and say, I'm going to hide this word in my heart. And no one can take, you know what? No one can take God's word from you when it's hidden in your heart. Yeah, right. You may, as the disciples have been, cast into prison for preaching the gospel. Now, it's not really happening very much today, but I believe it's going to come. I mean, I know it's going to come. It's not just, it may come. No, it is coming. Right. The Bible talks about great tribulation. It talks about Christians being persecuted all throughout history, it's happened. It's going to happen here, too. It's just a matter of time. And the more and more wicked our nation's becoming, well, the more and more persecution is going to be against people who preach righteousness. It's just the way it works. But if you have God's word in your heart, you know, they could take your physical Bible from you. They could cast you in a prison cell, but they can't take God's word from you. You've got it hidden in your heart. That's one place they can't get to. And if you have God's word hidden in your heart, he says, that I might not sin against thee. One of the benefits, one of the great things about memorizing scripture, memorizing God's word, is that when you reach different crossroads in your life and you're making certain decisions and you're thinking about what I should do here, you'll have God's word coming back to you. All the relevant passages. What should I do here? You pray to God, God, what should I do? and you've memorized God's word, it's so much easier. 
oh, well, the Bible says this here. Okay, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. We have crossroads probably more often than you realize in your life. They don't seem like crossroads at the time, but you can look back and be like, wow, I didn't realize all the ramifications of, of that, of that event in my life and how my entire future has just completely changed because of some event that didn't really seem like that big of a deal at the time. Yet it was still a decision. It was still a point where you, you need to decide to do something. You have God's word hidden in your heart. This is going to help you not to sin. It's going to help you to have wisdom to make the right choices. Let's keep reading here in Psalm 119, look at verse number 12. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. With my lips have I declared all the judgments of, my, of thy mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. So this goes back to having, you know, meditating on you know, his precepts, his teachings, his law, okay? Meditating on it and having respect to it. It's one thing to just read the Bible. It's another thing having the respect of God's word. And, and this is valuable. This is really important. This is not just checking off a box like, well, I checked off the box. I went to church today. Well, I checked off the box. I prayed today. Well, I checked off the box. I read the Bible today. But it's empty. Have respect unto God's word. Meditate on it. Consume it. As, as your life, depending on it. Verse number 16. I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. Again, how are you going to not forget God's word? How about committing it to memory? That is a surefire way not to forget God's word. Jump down to verse number 97. Memorizing scripture will make you wise. So we already saw in the last passage it's going to help you not to sin. I meditate on your word so I don't sin, so I won't sin against thee. And here's a great way if you want to show someone else the understanding or the, the importance, excuse me, of, of memorizing Scripture. Remember Psalm 1, and especially memorizing and just having so much value in God's law that you're meditating on, you're memorizing it. Psalm 119, if your Bible has the, the subdivisions of Psalm 119, there's all the different letters, an easy way to remember this, to just turn to this quickly, is this one is mem. So you just think of it just being short for memory or memorize, right? It's an easy passage to go back to because this whole, pa this whole section of Psalm 119 is just filled with, with concepts of memorizing Scripture. So look at verse number 97, Psalm 119, 97. Oh, how love I thy law. It is my meditation all the day. See, why do you preach on the law so much? Well, I love God's law. And you know what? It should be my meditation all the day. Can you say that you love the law, first of all? <laughs> oh, I love thy law. You ought to if you don't. It's good for you. Not anything bad for you. I had a false concept a long time ago, right? Just before I got saved and even newly saved of just, you know, kind of thinking like, well, if I have to, to you know, obey God's commandments and I can't, you know, I, there's some things that are just, I, I just can't do that are fun. It's kind of taking the fun away, right? You know, the mindset they're talking about. Someone, someone who basically is just kind of giving themselves over unto fleshly lusts and desires like drinking, like doing drugs, like fornicating or whatever. Say, oh, well, I know God's got rules against all that stuff, so I guess I can't really have any fun anymore. But what a foolish, what a foolish thought that is. I was a fool to ever think any such things because giving yourselves to that stuff is going to destroy you. All of those things. The reason why God gives you the commandments is not so that you can't have any fun. God's trying to protect you. He's looking out for you. He wants you to avoid the pitfalls and the traps and the destruction that comes along with sin. So he gives you commandments and rules and saying, don't do these things. It's the same reason any loving parent has rules for their children. I don't want to see my children go off and have a worthless life, have a meaningless life, 
destroy their lives, live in misery, live in sorrow, make all kinds of bad choices that are just going to stay with them for the rest of their life. So I give them rules. I don't want my children getting hurt. I don't want them getting hit by a car in the street. So I give them rules, right? All these different things you give rules for your children for because you love them and you're trying to look out for them and protect them. God's the same way. We ought to love God's commandments because he's looking out for us. He doesn't want you to be miserable. But see, sin will make you miserable. You might have a pleasure for a season, for a short, but you know what? It's vain. It's going to go away. It's going to leave you empty. And whatever joy you think you can get from sin will be overshadowed by the effect of that sin in the long run. By, by the lack of joy and the misery that you'll get as a result of going down that path. It will come back in the end. We ought to love God's law and meditate on the law all the day. Let's keep reading here. Verse number 98. Thou, through thy commandments, has made me wiser than mine enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers. Why? He said, my, even my own teachers, the people who are trying to teach me things, he said, I have more understanding than they do. Why? For thy testimonies are my meditation. You memorize and meditate and just study the word of God, you will get more intelligent. You will get wisdom. You will get knowledge. I'm not against learning things in general. I think it's great. I think we ought to be intelligent and be learning things. But I'll tell you what, when you put the priority on memorizing and studying and knowing God's word, you will gain wisdom that is way more valuable and way more important and that will help you way more than understanding all the fine details of, you know, rocket science. And you can be much wiser than people who have dedicated their life to doing such a thing um, because God's word is truth and, and this is what the Bible's teaching here let's keep reading here verse number 100 I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word I have not departed from thy judgments for thou hast taught me how sweet are thy words unto my taste yea sweeter than honey to my mouth through thy precepts I get understanding therefore I hate every false way turn back to Psalm chapter 1 I'm going to read for you from Joshua chapter 1 Joshua 1 8 says the book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Do you want to be prosperous? Do you want to have success? Meditate in God's word day and night. That's what Joshua 1 says. Are we seeing a theme here? Meditate in my word day and night. Love the law. Make that your focus. Make that part of you. Let that dwell in you richly. Psalm 1, look at verse number 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Amen. That's why I make this point, because I don't think I've made it to this point, to this point of sermon meditating on God's word is not the same as reading God's word. I believe we ought to read God's word. I'm not saying we shouldn't read. It's important to read. You get some understanding. You're going to understand and, and get to know the, the stories, the teachings as you read God's word. But that's separate from meditating on God's word. Because when you meditate on God's word, you're, you're taking smaller chunks. You're kind of thinking about things and, and chewing on them and really processing what's going on. When you read, yeah, you're processing, but you're continuing to move forward. When you're meditating on something, you've got it parked for a while. You're meditating on God's word. You're meditating God's law. And that's one, 
the, you know, when you memorize scripture, you are meditating on it because you're going over the same verse over and over and over again. And I challenge you, if you haven't really done Bible memory, take me up on the challenge this month. Whatever the prize is that we're going to give away for, for completing the challenge, is going to pale in comparison to how much you will gain more understanding from memorizing the scripture. Uh, every single passage I've ever committed to memory, I've always learned more that I never understood before, things I hadn't seen before, because I've meditated on the scriptures, because I've committed them to my heart every time without fail. Every single time I've me memorized scripture, it always happens. And I see a lot of nodding, so <laughs> apparently I'm not alone in this. Take up the challenge. You know what? Prove me wrong. I don't think, I don't think it can be proven wrong. I have enough scriptures here telling me, hey, if you're meditating and you got respect unto God's word, you're going you're gonna to receive the wisdom. You're going to get this. Ask to God who giveth liberally and upbraideth not. You want wisdom? You want understanding? Meditate on God's word. He'll give it to you. He'll open up to you. Verse number two again, but his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law doth he meditate day and night and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in the season. His leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Just like Joshua 1.8. You want to be prosperous? You want, you want your works? You want the things you're doing to, to actually be beneficial and help and, and succeed? Meditate in God's word. 1 Timothy chapter 4, we're almost done. The last place all of you turn is 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy is a, is a book written by the Apostle Paul to Timothy. Timothy's a younger preacher, he's a man of God, and he's got, he's got his own mission to, to do to serve the Lord. And near the end of the epistle here, the Apostle Paul is writing unto Timothy. And uh, he's going to tell him to meditate on the Word of God and to, to give it the importance that it deserves. Look at verse number 13, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery, Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them. He said, meditate on it and just give yourself completely to the reading and the doctrine and the exhortation and the word of God that thy profiting may appear to all. Wow, there is the word again. Profiting, prosperous. All from meditating on scripture. Memorizing God's word. Putting it in your heart. Verse 16, take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine, continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Let God's word dwell in you richly. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Now to complete this challenge and to just memorize scripture in general, you need to put forth effort. It's not, it's not going to come easily. You may need to stay up late. You may need to get up early. You may need to cut out some parts of your life that you're normally used to doing that are just kind of a waste of time. And these are things, if, you, you know, if you've been following along with our church, especially if you're visiting, we've been doing this since January. We do a, a new challenge every single month. And one of the challenges was literally to just try to get something out of your life and not reintroduce it at the end of the month. Just, just change your schedule, change your routine to allow more time to serve God in, in various capacities. We've been focusing this month on taking your time to make sure you're going out and trying to reach people with the gospel of Christ every day. I mean, my normal routine... Some, there's many days where I go to work and I come back home and I don't really have interaction with anybody. That's just my normal schedule. 
But when you're challenging yourself to do something, you say, you know what, this is important. I'm going to make sure I do this every single day this month. You're going to have to go out of your routine, out of your comfort zone. You have to do things that you might not normally do to push yourself to do more. And that's what we're trying to do. You should never just get comfortable in your Christian life. Because when you allow yourself, and look, I'm, I'm all for having routines and having good schedules and, 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 and you know, Im implementing Bible reading and prayer and all these other things. We do that at home. I do that. It's part of my schedule. There's things I just do because they're part of my schedule. But when you allow yourself to just get kind of, I call it stuck or just, or just complacent, and just fall into a routine and just fall into a habit and you're not pushing yourself to do more, what ends up happening is that opens up the door for backsliding. If you're not moving forward, you're going to slowly start moving backward. So I want to challenge you. Push yourself, even in just in this one area, for this next month, push yourself to get God's word in your heart. Realize the value of, you, of it. Treat the Word of God with such importance, you say, you know what, I'm going to commit this to memory. And in the spirit of this, of this challenge, let's say you go, for whatever reason, I, I think everybody can do this and complete this challenge. It's not something that is undoable. You just, you have to work at it. But this is by no means unattainable. This is attainable by everybody, but it requires effort. Okay. And it's going to require daily effort. You may be able to get away with a day or two of not doing it, but you, you need to be investing time in, in being able to commit these verses to, to get the entire chapter within these 30 days. You have to commit to that. But if for any reason you just get overwhelmed, look, pick another passage. I don't care what you pick. Go along with the spirit of this challenge and challenge yourself to memorization. If you've never memorized anything before and you're daunted by this task and, and you say, I can't do that, look, you can do it. But at the very least, choose something and memorize it. Okay, that's what I want you to do. I want to push you to do that. Get a little bit uncomfortable and say, you know, I'm not good with Bible memory. Learn some, just, just do it. Focus on that this month. Don't forsake other things that you normally do for God, but, but let's add this. Psalm 119, verse 148, you don't have to turn to the Bible, reads, Mine eyes prevent the night watches that I might meditate in thy word. It's talking about staying up late. My eyes prevent it. I'm not, I'm not closing my eyes. The night watch, the night watchman's coming on board. Well, I'm still up. Why? Because I want to meditate in God's word. It's quiet. The house is quiet, everyone's asleep, and I'm up meditating in God's Word. Because it's worth it. It's worth it to forego different things in your life. A little bit of sleep here, a little bit of sleep there, whatever. Let's, let's put that value on God's Word and let it dwell in you richly. Let's bow our heads have a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for your words, and I, I pray that you will please just help us to if we don't already, to, to love your, your commandments and love the law and love your, the, whole, the whole book, Lord, the, the entire Bible, and um, help us to commit these, uh, these truths to our heart. Lord, help us to, to put the priority on it this month, and, and God, teach us and open up our understanding and our wisdom. Help us to be successful in all that we do for you, dear Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.